all right torch here um now we're gonna go and put this back together i already got in the upper control arm and the strut as you can see upper control arm i start there because that's pretty hard to get at from the top side as you saw in the last video and gonna hang the strut in now next is getting this strut rod in and these bushings are brand new they're really tight so the best way I have found to get these started is get you a big old socket put it on there and then you got to hit it with a little jumbo here. Get it started like that. And then what I do, I'll go ahead and I'll stick it in the hole back here. And then I'm just going to use... the front washer and the nut to pull that bushing together because I can't even it's so hard to get it on there it's about the only way to do it I mean I could keep hammering on it but I don't want to mess it up this is a little bit more work but like I said I don't want to ruin the bushing so I put that washer on there and put the nut on there tighten it up kind of let it self press together then I can put the front bushing on all right so now I got that bar in next is going to be the lower control arm with these funny funky doodads and I remember in the other video where I said I scratched around these to mark where they were so i can get them back close to the alignment but still gonna need an alignment unfortunately because you can't get them perfect but anyway i want to get them as close as i can so i'm gonna go ahead and uh pick up that arm slide it into the frame back there and through that end and at the same time i got to kind of finagle this right here through that hole with brand new bushings so that'll be a little fun okay so something like that i had to put the control arm in this bushing on first and leave the back end loose can't put the bolt in there yet i got to get that in there suppose I can go ahead and slide this one on. Boy, this front end is going to be totally different with these nice tight bushings. This is unbelievable. What did I do with that big nut? There it is. There's that great big nut. Kind of hand tighten that for now. Now I'm going to slip this one in in the back. Got to kind of finagle this stuff around a little. That's why I leave everything just a little loose. So there's a little wiggle of room on everything when you're putting it back together. somewhat to where it's got to be now the fun part is the strut so 
think I'm going to have to turn that a little bit. That's one reason why I keep big wrenches around like this. Can I get in here? Twist that a little bit. And then I'm going to have to pull on this and push down on this at the same time. Get that bolt in there. And that's also why I got the good old hobo freight hammer that can kind of knock this stuff around and see if I can get it in where it belongs. close come on baby you know that hmm maybe Gotta be it. I think this one might have went in from the front. Although I don't think it really matters much. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to play with it. All right. So now I got back bolts in I got the strut mount in bolt now I gotta put this stabilizer link in here you gotta put this in first I'm leaving everything just a little bit loose like I said you're gonna you need to be able to shift some of this stuff around so, see what we can tighten up here. I want to get them, you know, snug down and then back them off just a little bit just so they're tight but movable. comes down to it there really isn't a whole lot to these front suspensions oh, man no wonder they fold up so easy in car accidents there's nothing here I mean kind of like the good old days you have a big old chunk of A-frame on the top and on the bottom okay now that's a little tighter than I want it so loosen that up a little bit there we go you want to be able to maneuver that around because what I got to do now is drop in the the whole big piece here and then line it up here first and then kind of drop it onto these and oh boy I almost think I had to take this back off and hook this in first and then slide that on I don't know We'll see. We'll try it this way. If it don't work, then I just got to take this back out. But we shall see. Oh. Let's go over to parts pan one again. Grab this baby. It has been completely 
Craigslist restored. Which, as you know, means just cleaned up and painted. Oh, there we go. I'm going to try and slide that in. Get it on the back of that. See if we can see this. Get a better angle here. I got the top one in. You can't see me. I got the top one in. And then... I'm going to line up this bottom and hopefully this at the same time and drop them in. So. Which is always a little fun. It's almost going. Come on. Pretty darn close. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I have to hit you with Mojumbo. There we go. Gonna ruin my Craigslist finish a little bit, but oh, now the top ones come out, which is no big deal. Just. Push that back down. I got to get the bolt for that. But I can slip this nut on here. And let's see here. Get you a better angle. Tops out, kind of, but that's okay because it's where it's. It's in the hole, so put it that way. <laughs> but this stuff's all lined up here. Close, like I said, I leave everything a little loose. I can jiggle it around to get all everything together. Then I go back and tighten everything up. So now I got to go get this bolt out of the Craig's refinishing area. And pop that in so I'll be back all right now I got that bolt in now I'm putting in this, this top of the stabilizer link and I gotta go around to the back side of that one and tighten that up which the only way I can get in there is with one of these Those I'm tightening down because I think they're not going anywhere. So, and I already got this one tightened down. This one is a 18 millimeter. Let me get that just a little more. A little bit. All right. And this was a 15, I believe. Yep. 15, right? Where is it? No, 17. Ooh, sorry. 17 for the stabilizer links. And what was the strut bolt? Oh, come on. 13 sixteenths. Man, I can't believe it's that big, but yep. 13 sixteenths. Alright, so now, now I got to go way back in there to where, you see that, 
that's the inner tie rod end where it goes in there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's two little Allen keys. Allen screws, I mean. That I gotta tighten up. Oop, blocking you. Sorry, this is hard to do. One hand. But let's see. Get some light in there. See that little Allen key? Allen screw, I mean. I gotta tighten that one up, and there's one on the other side. Now, the original didn't have this. They just had them on with Loctite. And if you go back to my video on taking this apart, you'll see how I had to heat those up to get them off. So, apparently, the new ones don't need Loctite. You just put in those nice little Allen screws that'll hold it in place. But, if you're like me you might want to do both smear in a little bit of loctite and use those screws not that i think they would really go anywhere but you never know sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry so yeah i like to be safe especially with this car because i will most likely be taking it well over the speed limit occasionally so yeah i don't need something like that coming loose anyway maybe i don't advocate breaking the law at all but you know i might have to like run from some crazy people or something <laughs> you know what i mean anyway so yeah that's nice and tight man this is going to be such a difference on this car i'm telling you all that other stuff was just so so loose i mean look at this this is the lower control arm i mean just nothing tie rod right end i mean look at that if you can see that it's actually been making that hole into an oval that's how bad that was i'm surprised it didn't break Stabilizer links aren't stabilizing anything. I mean, what a joke. Upper control arm, same way. I mean, I don't even have to... <laughs> that thing just... Nothing. Sure would be nice if they would make a way... You could replace this piece and have a Zerk fitting on the top to lubricate them. So they wouldn't go bad, but... No. Then the... Auto parts companies wouldn't make any money now, would they? So, another way to screw the American public. Now these tie rod ends, this one probably wasn't bad, but it is now because I had to heat it up with a torch and I burned out all that grease and whatever was in there, some kind of seal like, but I had to replace the other side, so I already had a new one for this side, so I might as well change it since I got brand new. So, probably really didn't have to change it, but eh, while I'm in here. Now, the tie right end. Put it out of the bag here. See, everything else has Zerk fittings, except the stupid lower uh, I just can't believe that you know not that many people are going to grease their stuff anyway so the auto companies probably shouldn't really worry about it but I will grease my stuff you will grease your stuff if I tell you to so I'm telling you grease your stuff see now, you, now you're going to do it so no, you're better off greasing this stuff. Every other oil change. Just check them. Give them a little tiny shot. And see. Now, I don't know what's the deal with that. You know. So you only need the one nut, but. Oop, I can't put that on yet because I have the boot in the so-called parts washer so i'm gonna have to go get that but in the meantime i'm gonna shut you off 
I'm going to crawl underneath here with my flashlight and my Allen wrench. Tighten up those two Allen screws. Then I got to go finish washing off the boot that goes on there. Clean that all up nice and dry it off. And I'm probably going to blow it off with my air compressor and let it dry a little bit before I put it on. Because I don't want any moisture getting trapped inside of there. So that means I'm going to go take a break and do something else for a little while while that stuff is thoroughly dry. But I guess I could pop on this rotor and cat. Well, I'll wait. I'll wait. But anyway, I think... That's about where I'm going to end this video here, putting it back together. I mean, basically all I got to do is screw on this tie right end. And remember, like I was saying, count your threads on the old one. You can see it pretty easy on here with the rust. See where the rust is? So, you know, and you don't even really have to do that, too. I mean, you can actually just kind of line it up with the old one. Take this inside nut that's going on here, screw it back to there, get it about to that length, and then screw this on to the length where that would be, you know, and you're just going to get it close. No matter what you do, you're just going to get it close, unless you happen to be a front-end alignment guy and know what the heck you're doing, but um, just getting it as close to as where it was, and then taking it to the shop and letting the professional take care of it so like i said alignment's only a hundred bucks right now at least it was recently but you never know with these lovely prices they keep going up and up and up so anyway i'm not gonna ramble rant whatever all right so anyway i'm gonna go wash up that boot Put that on, tighten up those Allen keys, and then screw this tie rod end in, which will go right in here from the bottom. Just when you tighten that up, and if this starts to spin on you, which it shouldn't, just uh, take the hammer and kind of gently, because this here is tapered, so that'll stop it from spinning if you got a little pressure on it and if that don't work you can always put a, a floor jack underneath there to give it a little bit of pressure so you can get that nut tightened down and then don't forget your cotter pin and then of course the rotor just pops on there loose i'll unhook my little hanger here and put the caliper back on and that's pretty much done, and she's going to be off to the alignment shop sometime next week. So, anywho, I hope this helps somebody out. I know this is a 34-year-old car, so there probably isn't too many people looking for this video. But the ones that are, I hope I can help you out. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. There is no stupid question. I know. I've been there. I am a stupid question. So, if you want to ask me anything, feel free. I will respond as quickly as I can. But I'm a busy guy, so it might take a couple hours, but I will respond. Anyways, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for everything. And we'll talk at you later with whatever I decide to do next. Torch out.